Hello, Zero K fans, and welcome to another exhibition match series. I remain Dominic, or I am Dominic, or Shadow Fury 33, your host, whichever you prefer, and we are going to be having a match between Sakai and Cat Lady on Otago, which is going to be a, well, probably a macro oriented map. I mean, it's a macro oriented map, so probably a macro oriented match. Cat Lady starting out with what looks like a proxy factory? Well, we'll see what happens with that. On the other hand, Sakai playing more normal with the Cloaky Factory at the very beginning in their main base. And really, I'm curious what Cat Lady is doing because you don't usually see proxies ever, actually. Not just on this map, just you just don't see proxies. So to see a proxy is certainly a surprise. I'm only really curious what they're planning on doing with this because it... <sighs> Streams chat is suggesting Mace Rush, which I can see the option. I mean... Get a hovercraft plan up, and then, yeah, yeah, sure, that, that makes sense. I don't see any plans to do that, though. At the same time, a couple glaives coming around the map. Sakai so will be able to see that there's something up here. Catalina getting just a few more metal extractors. Kind of, uh, I'm not sure this is where they're... Okay, so I'm thinking this might be clever, because the way the metal extractors are right now, the glaives probably won't see them, and indeed they won't. So I kind of like this approach. I mean, Sakal's direct path won't cross these metal extracts, so Cat Lady can use them to help buff her commander. Or their commander. I mean, they're going to be... Well, they're going to be doing something with the commander. I don't know what. Machine gun field... Well, machine gun's normal. Cat Lady normally upgrades a machine gun commander, so I don't really see what's... Unless it is just a commander rush, and that's the entire game plan. Like I said, they're getting metal extractors along the edge, or along this road that they aren't going to be harassed on. Glaive's coming in, not really doing much. Commander coming in, not really worrying about too much. So yeah, that... Makes sense to me. But, I just don't... I just don't see it. I mean, the commander is clearly showing itself. It's very clear. Sakal knows Cat Lady is coming at them with a commander. And they have Glaives. And admittedly, you know, six glaives against an unupgraded commander would do the trick, but this is an upgraded machine gun commander. And instead going for phantoms. I like it. Wouldn't have been my first choice, but it's a good choice. It's better than I would have thought, oh, you know, just go for some reavers and work from there. No, 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 Phantoms are a good idea. I like it. Get the phantoms out. It should be up in time. That's what, 33 seconds? Oof. Okay, that's... That's pushing it. It'll probably be up soon enough. The first one will definitely be up soon enough. The second one, I doubt. I mean, looks like Sakal is just trying to do everything they can to push that out as quickly as possible. The commander coming in another 25... Well, 30 metal per second will be going into that phantom. 750 per, so that's going to be about 25 seconds per phantom for the second phantom. Assuming the storage lasts long enough, which of course it won't. But still, one phantom is out. And the Cat Lady is putting the commander in an odd direction in order to get that mace. There it is. Exactly right, Steel Blue. It is indeed a mace. So that will be... Well, mace versus Phantom. And I dare say... Sakal's kind of in a good position right now. I gotta be honest. I don't see this going especially well for Cat Lady. The mace... It was seen coming. The commander was seen coming. The Phantom will counter both. The... This is probably just going to be a slaughter. Not to mention, the maces have, or the Great Lids have finally figured out where some of these metal extractors have been built by Cat Lady. So Sakal right now, they aren't in a terrible position. The mace has also taken forever to build up, largely because Cat Lady built no power in the meantime. They have nothing to work with as far as the metal. I mean, they're accessing metal. They, I mean, they have metal extractors that are basically being lost. Finally getting some power plants, but I still feel like it's too little too late. I mean, this is building fine the mace. But again, the phantom is already in place. Sakal's already ready. Getting additional phantoms just to make sure they can deal with the mace as it comes up, and that's that's gonna work. Mace only has 1300 HP. It'll get one shot by the phantom. The commander will get two shot, or three shot rather, by the phantoms. It'll penetrate the shields and don't worry about that, but it like 3400 HP against 1500 damage a shot. Oof. The only downside, of course, being the phantoms are not on hold fire mode. They're on fire at will mode, which means they aren't Necessarily going to hit the commander, and the commander is going to decloak one of them. One phantom does go down essentially for free, but there are still other phantoms out there. One of which saves the day, getting rid of that first mace being built, and meaning that nothing else is going to be able to really get through. And of course, the third phantom to replace that first one getting killed. Still up, still ready. Counter the conjurer would build some power plants in the meantime, but that's fine. The conjurer is at least alive. 
more glaives coming around. Won't be able to do much good, unfortunately. Mace is, of course, a riot unit. It does counter glaives. It's meant to counter glaives. So, expect to see that working, and... Right now, the Phantom coming in should be able to take out everything. I mean, I like the Dark. I like the Daggers, but this Phantom... Yeah, go for the Factory. Just take it out. Factory with Glaives coming... No, Glaives, go for the... Actually, okay, not a bad idea. The Daggers are missing everything. But I'm just thinking, if the Glaives go for the Factory, they'll be in a great position to work from. Like, just go for the Factory. It'll be fine. It'll work. You don't need to go for the Daggers. Go for the Factory. Ah, it doesn't even matter. Phantoms in the trees. Commander is under Heavy Fire. And the Daggers aren't going to be able to do much against everything being built up here. Oh, but the Glaives, the whole point of the Glaives is to get rid of this... Just protect the Phantom. Go for the Phantom. Protect it. Don't let it die. It's going to die. It, it dies. Although, admittedly, the Commander is also under Heavy Fire. And it can't jump in. Ah, oh, but it can get close enough to close the Phantom. However, where's the other Phantom? Ah, there's the other Phantom. Okay, there's a dead Commander. Cat Lady has pretty much just lost their Commander, assuming the Daggers don't end up distracting everything. Which is not a safe assumption. They might actually succeed in doing so. Especially as there's no other defensive options other than these phantoms. Which, quite frankly, aren't doing enough. And another mace coming around the bo bottom does mean that this phantom ha has to do its job over the south. If we can get rid of the mace, it'll be fine. But that's a bit of a tall order. And that mace getting rid of one power plant. Another dag few daggers coming in. But the mace does not go down. The phantom doesn't, be able, to, doesn't able to shoot in time. Ah, that is a shame. The mace still goes down, but it may not be enough. The daggers taking heavy fire. Still, though, that's a call being heavily pressured. Unfortunately, those phantoms getting caught out. Cat Lady, they knew what they were doing with this. They really knew what they were doing as far as actually dealing with the phantoms. So that's fair. Streams chat is suggesting that Ronin could have been used instead. I kind of disagree. Like, I get the idea with Ronin because it... I don't know. I get the idea with Ronin because, yes, it can kind of hit in and do a lot of damage, but it doesn't do as good of a job of getting through the shields, and maces are surprisingly fast. So they'd probably still... I'm pretty sure maces would still get, run down the Ronin. Let's see, the Ronin speed is 69 animals per second. Mace speed is 66, so it would have been... Would have been really close, but in these tight, close quarters here, or this, well, not close, these ravines, it would have been a bit of a problem. Or valleys, I suppose. Inside these valleys, Ronin would have been kind of caught out, getting knocked against each other, getting knocked against walls. The maces would have still destroyed them. I don't disagree with the use of phantoms. I do, however, think that there were some tactical problems with the way they were used. At any rate... This is... This is still a reasonably winnable situation for Sakal. Like, Cat Lady... They're starting to build up. I mean, they have a lot of metal being reclaimed. But... As long as they... As long as the Phantoms stay up and can do their job against the Maces, it'll work. I just feel like Sakal's getting a little bit overwhelmed. I mean, they're not really moving the Mace around. They're not going for the Factory Kill or the Commander Kill or anything like that. Even though they could one-shot the Commander from here. Like, the Commander is basically dead. So, I like... The only thing I can think of is that... It's not really the focus, which I find strange. I think it really should be. But either way, it's... Like I said, it's not being used. And regardless of what the stream chat is saying about what is optimal and what isn't, the least optimal thing is the thing that isn't used at all, which unfortunately goes for those phantoms. They are not actually seeing a whole lot of action, and that means they aren't really protecting anything. The mace is able to just wipe out this entire southeast expansion with no resistance whatsoever, well, on the north side, it's a little bit of a different story, but even then, that's a dead con or dead radar tower, dead metal extractor. Where's the conjurer? I figured the conjurer dies too, but I can't even see the corpse of it. Oh, okay, that phantom. Yeah, I kind of kind of let down the team there. I mean, what's it? Another ten seconds? No, five seconds. Still, oof, that that sucks. Gets rid of the mace eventually, but again, the goal needs to be to get rid of the commander. To get rid of the commander, you at least open things up a ton, damage the economy a bunch, and if you get rid of the factory, again, that gets rid of everything. I like this, though. Getting some glaives alongside the phantoms, useful as protection, doesn't really help against the maces, but then that's the phantom's job, is to get rid of the maces, so... Not a bad synergy there. The important thing is to keep things together, and one thing about 0k that's a little bit difficult to learn a lot of the time is... 
or at least keeping your head, how close units need to be to each other to be effectively protecting each other. Because sometimes you think, oh yeah, this is close enough. No, 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 it's not. Some fast units can get inside and get to the phantoms before the glaives have any chance of getting back and saving them. So, that is a bit of a problem. Oh, right, radar dots. I forgot about that. Supreme was showing in chat that that miss happened because of being set to fire at radar dots. Because they are. And the fact that there's... The radar has wobble. That is always a problem. And I feel like this is actually possibly it. The mace coming in here... Oh, boy. That is that is bad. Mace is coming in here. Not a whole lot of resistance against it. The dagger's doing fine a job getting rid of all the glaives. The mace is getting rid of everything in the base. At the same time, the glaives sort of trying to come in as a bit of a counter-assault, but... I don't say it's going to work, not to mention the commander themselves have been has been healed up to the point that there's no way the phantoms... I mean, the phantoms, if they'd moved in, they would be in a position to deal with this. But unfortunately, they are not, and that means there is nothing they can do. And they will be firing off their shots initially at the factory and the mace. Because they are on fire at will, so they're not going to be going for the commander either. But at this point, going for the commander is too late. Sakal throws in the towel. Cat Lady's mace rush actually works, despite Sakal just about countering it at the beginning. Cat Lady was able to push away all that resistance and make sure there was no way Sakala could actually stop it. That has got to hurt. Well, at any rate, that's... That is that, and... That was... That was a hell of a game. <laughs> Very surprising from Cat Lady. Anyway, that... Well... That was one game, and the next game is going to come up in a sec, but I do want to talk about a couple things. First off, okay, so people have been pointing in the chat that there's a bit of a weirdness with the with the depth of field shader. Like, is there something that... I'm not sure that's a resolution thing because of the stream, if you're at 720p or not. Like, I mean, I can see it looking weird because it is going to look... It doesn't compress especially well. Oh, well, that's, yeah, because... Do you have depth of field in any capacity looks like looks like compression artifacts? There's like it's unfortunate that that is a thing. Like if you look at videos of like, movies and such, you'll see the same effect. It's kind of annoying. Not sure what to really do about it because like hell, I'm turning it off. But I I did notice it did seem a little bit stronger than I would have liked. Although I just submitted all the stuff for the settings, so I don't know. Yeah. It's sort of kind of weakened a little bit the next game. Also, there's another thing I was trying to think about that I wanted to talk about. About stream chat was saying something about the... Not the Ronin. Oh, yeah, right. So, people were talking about the attrition bars and the player bars. That is a thing. And the I've looked... I've looked into it, I haven't had a chance to really fix it, but basically, both of these take the data from the player lists. Like, there's just a player list you get from the engine if you just call for player lists. And I guess the order of that isn't guaranteed, because they both call for it, but they often end up with different orderings. So, like, in this case, it calls on the left, but it calls on the right in the attrition widget. And as far as I can tell from looking at, just skimming through the code, there isn't anything that actually sets which side it should be on. Like, by all rights, Cat Lady should be on the left, Sekal should be on the right, because that's where they were relative to each other. But that didn't happen. Because there's no code to actually checking for that. In either case. So, that's the thing. I'm not really sure... I haven't looked into it too hard to actually fix it. But that is a known issue that I keep having... that I find really annoying. Honestly, if that didn't happen, I'd probably just have the attrition widget right here the entire time under the main thing. So you just see, oh yeah, this is the amount of metal they've and kills they've had. I would have that, but instead I have to have it over here because it's not clear which one's which. Although it does make a nice symmetry of the player list. At any rate, that is that. So, the next match is going to probably be less cheesy. It's going to be Jasper versus KTDM on Fairyland. So stay tuned for that. It'll be up in a couple minutes. <laughs>